Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're having our monthly tech meet for the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart a GM Hydromatic 4-speed transmission that they used in the uh, R-Types and uh, Silver Cloud series. Let's see, this, is, this car is a 1960. It's got a few miles on it, and they're still there. So one of these passages is the apply. Let's try it. See how that? Yeah. So what happens is fluid comes through, I think, one of these ports, this one. That one right there. So when you go to put it in reverse, actually it goes through this tube here, I think. The tube that I pulled off? Yeah. And it, it puts, uses fluid pressure to apply it. You got to cover the return one, otherwise you get a face full of fluid. See how that does? And you can see there's leakage. There's always leakage. But with it running and constant pump pressure building, it's going to hold it. So that's your reverse <laughs> cone assembly. Ryan, yes, sir. Um, when the car got Love rid of that after an hour or so and you put it in reverse, it would sometimes pop out of reverse. Uh, that is usually in the linkage, but yeah, we're going to address <coughs> that, that yes, long so time to pull, move, too. Those rings disturb so, me. So they, so they didn't have the reverse gear in within the gearbox. Oh, there's a gear in there. This just locks it up. Yeah. Okay, we haven't got to the gears Instead yet. Instead of using a band to lock it, they use this thing. Well, it uses a band and a cone, a reverse locking mechanism. Let's see here. Pull that off. This turns the servo and the speedometer. This gear right here turns with the shaft. So when the car is moving, this is moving because that bolts up to your drive shaft. So this sits in there on the top, and that servo here sits underneath. Okay. It's nice to see a brass gear rather than a steel, aluminum, or plastic. Oh, well, plastic would not be good, but uh, brass wears. You watch out for that. All right, now we'll pull the pan. <coughs> We're dealing with, first of all, a 60-year-old car. They didn't work that great when they were new. And they're never going to work like a car. That's the same. This is normal. You're always going to find a little bit of that gray sludge in there. Um, See you always, if you see shiny things that look like brass or silvery metal thing, that's never good. But this is normal, this kind of a gray sludgy. This is a filter. This is not replaced unless it's all torn up. It's just cleaned. It's a screen. Uh -huh. All right. It's a metal screen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just an old. Old, old school guy, I guess. All right, here we go. Here's a bunch of stuff. We saw the brains on that. The brains were hooked on here, along with this this uh, housing back here. There's your governor. This is when the car is moving. The governor spins around. There's also another pump here that has a pickup that hooks into this back hole. That's the second, uh, the rear pump they call it. I'm not really sure exactly what. It's hey, hey, total. Can yes. You turn that rear shaft again. It looks like the front one's about around. The front what? It's just not, just not centered. Just oh, oh, this thing floats. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, see that? That's the problem. When it's bolted, it's it is bolted. It's centered. Okay. This this pilot actually goes into a bearing in the in the in the crankshaft. Yeah. Okay, and then this back part is all mounted and has that bearing here that holds it all. Oh. So all this stuff in the middle will float. Low. Okay. Uh, but the, yeah. And does the governor uh, just help smooth out the shift? Is that the governor tells the transmission how fast the car is going? It doesn't have a computer that runs off the speedometer or a wheel and lets you know how what the speed is. Uh, modern cars they don't have all this kind of stuff. They have clutch packs, which we'll get into soon, and they have solenoids, which just apply pressure to the clutch packs when it's needed. Particular ones, and the computer tells it when. 
uh, and it goes off of inputs from the, the vehicle speed and the vehicle load by the throttle position along with the, 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 the volume of air coming into the engine. It's, it's pretty complex. So the reason, like I said, initially we pulled this out is this seal is going bad and I said we want to pull the front pump. Now, when you pull the front pump, you don't necessarily have to pull all this off. You don't have to pull this off, but you do have to pull these off and then this is a pressure uh, control valve. That has to come off to get this pump to come out. So here's the pickup tube. This goes to the filter. Okay. In the pump here, there is an O-ring that goes around it. I've seen a lot of them where they're just dried out and that tube's slipping around. So you know it's going to be sucking a little bit of air. Um, so here's some more of those tubes. This, this is not bad compared I did a lot of the old Borg Warner 65 transmissions for the Jaguars and all. They've got so many tubes in them, it's ridiculous. Um, you have to almost take a picture of them to make sure you get them back in right. This only has a few. But sometimes these things get tweaked from heavy-handed mechanics or if I worked on it before, you never know. Um, now, I don't want to spray anybody here. I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you. I, got a splash song, yeah. <laughs> I did that last video. I got a shower. I know better. Okay. I showed you how the reverse cone look worked. All right. Let's. Uh, let's snake. One of these operates. Let's do this. I think. Uh, see that? Now that's a band right there, the rear band. Right. Now the rear band, when the car is not running, it is applied. Um, that's why you use that, um, you d use that measurement tool. Um, so anyways, the rear band is applied all the time until the car is running and the pressure from the torque converter and all that will pump it up and release it. So it's got a spring load to, for it to come on. It doesn't apply with uh, pressure so much as it does it's the springs hold it. It's tight right now. Uh, so that that passage right there applied that one. Nice. Really a goddess. Let's see. Oh, that's a different port. I think one of these works where's the rear clutch? One of these? Okay. This one this one, I think, applies this, but I got the tubes out right now. Oh, these two, I think. These, these two right here, you can hear inside there are clutch packs. You can hear it pop. That means it's applying. So it's applying in there. So this valve body here is connected to these ports, and it tells those things how to work. So it's always a good idea. To loosen the bands before you take it apart, it just makes it easier. If you're going to take it apart and put it back together, you're going to re readjust the bands anyway. Adjusting the bands is part of servicing, and the reason that tool came about, as I was telling Greg, um, the original shop manual from Rolls Royce on these had in it a section to where you adjusted it like they did from GM. So you had a tachometer on the car, so you ran the car, and you adjusted these bands while the car was running in neutral until they started grabbing and started slowing the engine down. There we go, that's what I was afraid of. Um, and then you had to count the turns it took to, you had to watch the RPM, and when it, you got to a certain RPM, and then you had to count your turns either going back or out after that to get back to idle speed. But what happened is Rolls-Royce found out that a lot of guys were, I guess in the dealership, getting paid to do a service on the thing, and all they did was pull a plug out of the carpet, adjust the bands, and adjust the throttle, and it worked great, but they didn't change the fluid and clean the filter, and do as they're supposed to. So they stopped making that manual, and they made a new manual that didn't cover it that way. You had to use these special tools, like this one, the rear band, you hook into this, this housing here, 
and then you adjust the band until this lever just touches this face here, which I figured out a long time ago because I didn't have one of these. Somebody, it's a half inch here between this housing and that lever, and that's close enough. It's always been close enough on that one. The front one is a lot more critical, and adjusting the band on the front one, I'll do that real quick for you right now. You pull this plug out, okay, and you use a, this is a band adjusting tool, and what it is is there's a spring in there with some, a shaft, and you screw this outer housing, you back off the center, screw the outer housing, so it's hand tight, then you run this finger tight to your feel resistance, okay, and then the book says go five turns, five full turns, so that would be one, two, three, four, five. And then there's this little washer here that should, once you get enough pressure on that, once it's bottomed out, it should just barely turn. It should just be, it should be friction, but turn, uh, still turn. And the way you get to that setting is this upper band. At the other side of the band, there's a, a steady block. Um, and you adjust this until you get that right tension. Okay. Yeah, it's all by feel running. Pretty much. Just well, pretty much. It just has to turn. It's not super it's not critical. technical. But one of those tricks you were asking about is to adjust this to three and a half turns. It makes a better shift. So you don't do the five turns, you do the three and a half. That's the only thing that I do to modify it. Modify better shift. Better. Not Feels better. Feels better. It's a timing thing. And this applies the front band. So you get the band adjustment first before you start playing with the linkage. The throttle linkage? Yeah. Yes. You always do the, the band adjustments first. So once you know that's correct and at home base, so to speak, mm -hmm. then you start working with the, the linkage. Right. That's just like when you do a tune-up on an old car. You set the time or the points first, then you set the timing, and then you adjust the idle. And make sure because they all, you have to start with your baseline. Yes. Cool.